After the first trip on one of Amtrak's new routes ended in disaster Monday, investigators are looking at what went wrong. Early reports indicate the train was traveling much faster than the speed limit. The NTSB said Tuesday the train was not equipped with positive train control, which can slow a speeding train. It also revealed that emergency braking was activated during the accident, not before. Carter Evans has the latest on the investigation. Today, cranes lifted the heavy, crumpled train cars that littered the I-5 freeway near Tacoma. New photos from inside the train show the mangled passenger compartment. The train derailed as it was approaching a curve. The front locomotive jumped the tracks and went over an embankment. Several passenger cars followed, some even careening off a bridge onto the highway below. The National Transportation Safety Board is examining the train's data recorder. Preliminary indications are that the train was traveling at 80 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour track. Amtrak has offered no explanation as to why the train was traveling at more than twice the speed limit. But radio transmissions after the crash suggest there was another person in the locomotive with the engineer, which could have been a distraction. Our uh, gentleman who was in for the uh, head end trip today uh, seems to have perhaps a broken uh, Beamer? For the most part, the control of that train is in the hands of the engineer. Russell Quimby is a former railroad accident investigator for the NTSB. He says investigators will focus on the engineer's actions. The engineer being asleep or distracted. We could also have some kind of medical issue that cropped up. Daniel Konzelman and his girlfriend Alicia Hoverson were driving when they saw the train wreck and immediately jumped out to help. Everybody that was inside was either killed or pinned underneath the train. Yeah, it's pretty sobering. Years before yesterday's first run, a local mayor sued to make the route safer. He lost. In light of yesterday's accident, Lakewood Mayor Don Anderson now wants even bigger changes. What would you like to see happen? I'd like to see it go back to the old route. I think it's, uh, it's safer, it's more scenic. Every once in a while, government has to back up and say, we made a bad decision, we can fix it. While well, yesterday was the first commercial trip on this section of track, transportation officials tell me they've been testing it since last spring with a variety of trains at different speeds. And Elaine, they say there were no issues. Carter, thank you. CBS News transportation correspondent Chris Van Cleve joins me now from Alexandria, Virginia. So Chris, what is the latest information you're hearing from investigators? Well, the NTSB is saying that uh, they have been able to recover the front and rear data recorders. So there's a, a locomotive at both ends of this train. Uh, they have the data recorders from both of those. They've also gotten their hands on the inward and outward facing camera from the lead engine. Uh, those cameras, though, were damaged in the crash. So they're going to be sent to the lab here in the Washington area to see if they can pull the video. The video could be crucial, particularly when we're hearing that one of the things they're going to look at was uh, distracted action on the part of the train operator. We learned there was a second person inside the train cab, a conductor who was uh, gaining familiarity with the new route apparently during the crash. Uh, so distraction uh, or what the NTSB would call loss of situational awareness will be something they'll look at and it's possible that inward facing camera could answer the question uh, pretty quickly uh, if that it, that uh, locomotive engineer was focused on uh, on, the, on running the train or something else uh, leading up to the crash. We also know that the train's emergency braking system kicked in automatically at about the time the accident began. It was not initiated by the engineer. Hmm. Well, Chris, after the 2008 Metrolink crash in California, Congress had mandated positive train control in all trains by 2015. So why isn't it a standard feature now? Well, after intense lobbying by the, the rail industry, in fact, uh, freight railroads and, and some passenger railroads threatened to shut down if there wasn't an extension granted, Congress approved an extension. It's a three to five year extension. So the, the deadline is the end of 2018, but uh, rail lines can then get an extension to 2020. And that's uh, assuming that they don't just go back and lobby for more time. The PTC technology is expensive to install. Uh, they had an, a seven year window to do it. Uh, and if you look at the numbers right now, only about 41% of passenger trains 
uh, have passenger locomotives, I should say, have the PTC equipment. If you look at uh, how much track is actually up and running, where the locomotives, the signal equipment, all of the technology that goes into making this positive train control work uh, for passenger rail, it's only about 23% or so of all of the passenger rail track in the country. So there's a, a lot of work to do. And real quick, what positive train control does, basically it's a bunch of sensors that will tell the train if it's going too fast or if a signal up ahead says stop, the computer will take over and slow the train down or stop the train. Right, important technology. Chris Van Cleve, thank you so much, Chris. Sure thing.